Hello everyone and welcome to another video from Carl's Tech Shed. Well what I've got here for you today is uh, it's an old car phone. Um, this is probably from the early 90s. Um, this was in the lot I picked up from the car boot sale today. Um, so I thought I'd just do a teardown on it. Um, I'm sure it's going to be quite interesting to see some early mobile phone technology. Um, as I said, this is a, this is a car phone, so it wasn't designed to be used. Um, I'm sure you could use it, uh, you know, out of the car, but it was designed to be used in the car, and that's why you've got the uh, earpiece on the underside. So originally, this would have been placed down uh, in 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 the car like that, uh, and you would have answered it by picking it up and speaking into it down here listening here um, which is why modern phones nowadays have it the other way around but for some reason these these just had it this way around so uh, yeah I thought I'd take this apart and uh, we'll see what's inside it okay well as you can see uh, this is actually made by a company called Matsushita um, but this is uh, manufactured in the UK which is quite unusual uh, for a mobile phone and certainly these days you never see mobile phones made here in the UK so uh, if we have a look over here, as you can see, we've got uh, a lot of um, a lot of components, a lot of ICs compared to modern phones. Uh, nowadays, all of this and uh, the rest of what's up here, plus loads more, would all just be put into one single uh, micro uh, microprocessor. So you'd have all of this uh, just in a single chip, or maybe a couple of chips. Uh, but now, but in in this, as you can see, there's a huge number of ICs. Uh, we'll start over here. Now, this is a small um, at uh, this is a small 512 uh, 512k EEPROM uh, down here, made by AMD. Uh, it's quite unusual because uh, to, you know, to have an EEPROM uh, in a phone, and just under here, I'm going to peel this sticker off, and I'm sure you'll see the little glass window under here because these are actually UV erasable, so um, you could erase the program that was on them by exposing them to. UV light, uh, and then you could reprogram them, and hence the reason that this is actually removable, so you could remove it from its socket, configure it, and place it back in. Now these were uh, these EEPROMs; they were generally used, uh, you know, all over the place. You could use them for PC BIOS ICs. You could use them f uh, in a lot of industrial applications. Um, so, but it's just unusual, especially you know, it's it's unheard of nowadays, uh, and even for the last ten or fifteen years, CVs and a phone. Um, but yeah, I mean, this has a UV erasable EEPROM uh, inside it, which uh, I'll definitely salvage that. As you can see, it's made by AMD. It's an uh, AM27C512, so it's a fi uh, 512 kilobits of, of data on there. Uh, now, if we have a look here, we've got a pair of these uh, pair of these ICs now. Although these are reversed, they're ac they're actually the same IC. Um, these are actual actually uh, th these are actually analog multiplexes. Um, so these are uh, compare th these are actually processing the signals. And the reason you've got two is because uh, one's going to be for sending, and the other one's going to be for receiving. And that's why you've got the two um, the two coax cables here, um, which then go up to the antenna. Now, uh, contrary to popular belief, um, as you can see, this this has the classic uh, aerial on it, you know, which you expect to see on these old brick phones. But as I'll show you in a minute, this is com this completely uh, this com unconnected to anything. Uh, it's purely a placebo um, effect, you know, that you were going to get a better signal if you push the aerial up. But it's purely for sight. It's purely there for for decorational psychological reasons. Um, it serves no other purpose uh, because it's not connected to anything. Um, so it's quite unusual that so uh, there's a little myth that I've uh, debunked there for a few of you I'm sure that these these old phones had an aerial but it wasn't actually connected to anything uh, now as you can see down here we've got uh, a series of of uh, trim pots now if you have a look at the uh, markings on the on the uh, silk screen for this you've got uh, M what's that WBD sat dev tone um, I can't see what that says under there because it's covered up with a component. But yeah, all of these, you know, would would be um, configured when this was manufactured. So um, these would all be set and uh, have a mark put on them so that they could be. Uh, although these can be changed at a later date, but initially you would just want to keep them where they are. Uh, now up here, you've just got a low voltage. Uh, there's a, a low voltage uh, comparator here. Um, there's a couple of other ICs here. Uh, I'm just, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this um, RF module off and we'll have a look at what's under here. 
um, because this is a very big board uh, and as you can see it runs the whole length it's going to run the whole length of the, of the phone and then you've also got this RF can here which is going to have uh, all of the RF goodness in there for sending and receiving signals uh, and then up here you've got this earpiece which is just connected by these four wires here um, now you've actually got two wires for the earpiece and another two for this reed switch here um, I'm going to see if I can focus on this for you as you can see the reed switch is actually uh, open at the moment, it's, it's very difficult to see, but it is open. Um, so I can imagine that when this were uh, when this was placed back in its cradle, um, there'd be a magnet inside there which would then close the circuit, um, which would indicate to the microcontroller that it's actually been placed back and uh, to end the call if the call, if the um, user hadn't pressed the the end button. So um, yeah, I mean it's a very interesting bit of kit here. I'm just going to take this off and we'll see what's underneath it. Okay, well now that I've taken the uh, cap shielding off the can, uh, you can see what's inside here now. Um, there's a lot of these uh, filters along here, along here, um, and there's also a couple here. Uh, there's a couple of fuses here, again, more filters. Uh, I mean, the amount of shielding on this is is, is incredible. Um, you have to remember, all of this is analog, so you would have needed a lot of shielding um, to prevent all of the, the different frequencies from interfering with each other. So um, you've got both of these. These are from, obviously, the top and bottom. Uh, but also on here you've got uh, another can over this device here. I'm not quite sure what that is without taking it off. Um, you've got a small, uh, you've got a couple of these operational amplifiers here. Um, if you flip this over, there's another, um, there's another amplifier I see here. Um, and j just generally there's a huge number of, of, of uh, analog components in this. As you can see there's a lot of crystals and oscillators. Um, there's only a couple of trim pots on this because most of the, um, most of the frequency selection is done uh, digitally. That's the only uh, digital part of this but all of the frequencies which run through it are going to be analog. Uh, now I've taken the board out of uh, the main casing so you can see what's on the other side of it. Um, now as, as I said before this uh, this IC here is most likely the display controller and I'm pretty sure that is the case because when you flip this board over um, there's no other components up this end of the board. Um, there's this small interface controller here um, but I'm pretty sure that's just like a, a TTL controller um, so that would be just controlling the keyboard and converting that um, into a signal that's readable by the uh, microcontroller at the top of the board. So um, as you can see there's quite a lot of components in uh, an early 90s car phone. So um, yeah, I can imagine that would have cost quite a lot of money to, uh, to design and certainly to manufacture, which would uh, explain why mobile phones and car phones were so expensive. Um, especially when you compare that with today's phones which have you know probably less than a tenth of the components that are in this um, and also because they're produced on a much larger scale they're a lot cheaper uh, and that's why you can pick up a basic phone in Tesco for about five pounds nowadays so uh, yeah it's quite an interesting uh, interesting bit of early 90s technology well uh, thanks for watching and I'm gonna try and get a few more videos up very soon of the other stuff I bought recently